Okay, in this week's uh, topic, I wanted to speak about etylocollagen. And this is very foreign to a lot of people. What is etylocollagen? How is it different than collagen? And is it really the future of barrier membranes? And so in this video, I wanted to talk about it because, you know, it made a full chapter in our textbook, use of uh, etylocollagen as a next generation biomaterial. A lot of potential here, and a lot of people don't know what it is. So when we look at etylocollagen and when we look at collagen in general, Basically, when you look at a typical collagen strand, okay, it has all of these um, telopeptides. Okay, and the telopeptides are found at the end chains of collagen, and that's what's actually causing an immune response. So when you take um, collagen from bovine source or from porcine source or from wherever they come from, and when you take a full collagen strand and you place it into a human, it does cause a bit of an immune response. And the reason why is because uh, the ends, these little telopeptides, are causing the immune response. And so a group of researchers said, well, why not cleave off, cut, you know, the ends and get rid of those and just keep the stuff that's good. And that's what etylocollagen is. So they basically just take pepsin, they cleave off at a certain site, get rid of the telopeptidation, that's the method, uh, telopeptides, and then they keep etylocollagen. We had the chance to do a lot of work with uh, etylocollagen. And uh, this relatively new technology makes use of processing techniques that utilize etylopeptidation and uh, lyophilization, uh, leaving roughly 25 to 30% etylocollagen in a non-immunogenic fashion, okay? So that was some work that was done many years ago, and we've since had the pleasure to publish on this topic. I did this, some of this work with uh, Masako and a couple other colleagues here. And you'll see difference between BioOS and uh, in this case here, one of the graphs, HyperOS, has a telocollagen. You actually see the collagen right on the surface. And when you load them, like you see here with BMPs, look at the difference when BioOS is loaded with BMP, right? BMP needs collagen. So look at how much BMP is being absorbed to BioOS versus this etylocollagen. Now you get a lot of the absorption here. More absorption, of course, then you're going to have better regenerative potential that you see here and uh, with, some, with some studies that were ongoing. Today in North America, uh, I don't believe that we have any material that's sold under etylocollagen such as membranes, etc. They do have a few coming in Europe and probably it'll take a few years before it migrates to North America. But when you do see something that says etylocollagen, it's just to simply understand that all it is is a more immunogenic collagen. So instead of, instead of having collagen with the telopeptides that are causing immune responses, you cut that off and then you keep this portion and that's a telocollagen. And that's you know probably going to be a big portion of the future barrier membranes. In the next, I would say, three to five years, we'll start to see more and more of these membranes. Uh, thanks everybody for joining this week and we'll see everyone next week. Thank you.